we have come to probably one of the most powerful concepts in all Cisco routing. Seriously. It's called policy-based routing. It is your way of looking at a Cisco router and saying, you know what, router? I know what your routing table says. And frankly, I don't care. I want you to do this. And you feed it some instructions using policy-based routing. I was trying to think of how do I introduce this, uh, this concept. And I don't know why this flashed into my head. You know the old Western movies where the criminals come out with their revolvers and they're like, I said dance. And they're pow, pow, you know, shooting at everybody's feet and they're kind of dancing around. It's kind of the feeling I get when I think of policy-based routing. It's like shooting at the router's feet and you're like, do this, do that, run the Anyway, I digress, right? Policy-based routing is the programming language of routing tables your way of overruling anything anyway actually does this ring a bell does anyone remember uh, a, a nugget that you've seen from me somewhere uh, in the past where I've said this is like program it's like a programming language for Cisco routers anyone know what I related that to it's actually route maps route maps are uh, essentially a programming language for Cisco routers so policy-based routing is your way of applying a route map to accomplish some objectives. This actually paints a perfect picture. Take a look at this scenario. We've got client one who surfs the internet all day doing nothing productive. Actually, I know, I know a lot of people like that. But all traffic from this client should route out ISP2, which is a slower internet connection. So management has approved it. They know what's going on. They're just like, yeah, route that guy out the slow internet connection, right? Whereas meanwhile, client two, let's just say it's this guy, handles sophisticated transactions. He's making up for client one. Both Telnet and HTTP traffic should route towards ISP1. So we're identifying certain types of traffic. Isn't this powerful? So again, overruling the routing table altogether and saying, okay, if he sends Telnet or HTTPS and it's from this guy, okay, that's going out ISP1, which is the more reliable connection. However, if he's not doing that, then maybe, you know, client one had some impact. That'll just go out the normal route of ISP2. That, I mean, let me ask you this. How could you accomplish that using a routing table? You can't. Routing table just says, okay, I don't, I don't know where to go. Let's go this way. Default route or something like that. Very, very basic, right? That's where the power of policy routing comes in. Quick correction before we get started. This should be a two. I'm sure some of you uh, saw my typo there. ISP2 201112. Okay. The router in the middle is going to be the policy router, and that's going to be where the action happens. All right, policy routers in the screen. Let's get familiar with it. I'll do a show IP interface brief. You can see three interfaces connected to the three networks that you see right here. Let's put a big P on this guy in the middle so we know this is the policy router. Uh, I'll do a show IP route. And something interesting here that you can see is just the connected interfaces. There's no default routes. So just know that by itself, traffic coming to this router is not going to go anywhere without policy routing. Now, that's not normal. I, I will say that normally you would have a default route, you know, pointing here or here or both. Maybe you're doing some load balancing for all the other clients. And actually, that would be fine. We can still have that. I just want to do this to prove a point. Going to happen a little bit later when we configure the route map. Okay. Let's get into global config mode. First thing that we need to do is create some access lists to identify these different clients. This is the, the slacker. You're doing nothing uh, all day. This will be client one. This is the guy who does some productive stuff using Telnet and HTTPS. So we have to be able to identify those so the router knows what it's matching. So I'll create an access list. I'll do a named access list. I'll call it IP access list standard. Uh, let's call it um, slacker. Right, we'll identify the uh, the client one right there surfing the internet all day. So since it's standard, all I have to do is say permit the host 192.168.1.20. Right, that's the guy we're trying to match. Uh, I'll create a extended access list, however, and I need that extended access list for the HTTP telnet uh, differentiation. So I'll call this guy uh, productive. Right? And I'll say permit TCP from the host 192.168.1.21 going to any destination equal to Telnet, that's 23, or HTTPS, 443, right? Is that right? Okay, now remember, at the bottom of every extended access list, every access list is an implicit deny. So just by putting those two permit statements, I'm saying implicitly that everything else will be denied, right? Okay, just keep that in mind. We'll have to use that in a little bit. So, okay, let's do the route map. I'll do route map. Uh, we'll name it, let's just call it corp policy. Corp underscore policy. 
Uh, we can do permit 10, but that's actually the default if I just press the enter key. Uh, so, sequence number 10, I'll do a match. Now I've got to match the slacker. Uh, we'll match the IP address slacker, right, using that named access list. And I'm going to do a set now. Now, when you're doing policy routing, just about everything, not everything, but just about everything is going to be under this IP keyword. We'll do IP next hop. So what I'm saying is when traffic comes from the slacker, his next hop will be, and that's where I'll say two, let's see, hang on, he's going... All traffic should go out ISP2, which is 201, 112, our corrected IP address there, right? ISP2. Okay, let's do a show route map. And I can see there's my sequence number 10 matching the slacker, and I'm sending him out the lower quality ISP2 connection. Okay, good. Now let's hit the upper a couple times. We'll do route map corp policy. I'll do permit 20. This is my second line in there. This time I'm going to match the client two transactions, the productive ones anyway. I'm going to do a match IP address and we'll do what I call it, Pro productive, right? Pro productive. There we go. Match the IP address productive and we will set the IP next hop to be. So this is going to be out ISP1 which is 200.1.1.2, right? Okay, let's take a look so far. Show route map. So I got my slacker going to the low quality one, the productive traffic, which is Telnet and HTTP only uh, going out the ISP one, the higher quality one, 200.1.1.2. Now here's the problem. That works well if stuff is coming in here being policy routed from client two, but what if this guy does HTTP traffic or he opens Pandora or something else that is using uh, a non Telnet or HTTPS port? Well, what's going to happen is he's going to drop. Why? Well, it's going to come into this corporate policy and it's going to say, okay, sequence number 10, match this. Okay, uh, sequence number 20, match this. And it goes, okay, well, you didn't match, right? Now, now hang on. Before you, you make the assumption that that means drop, that actually doesn't mean drop. That means you're not going to be policy routed. You're not going to be processed by this corporate policy. You're going to drop out and be processed by the normal routing table, which would benefit us in this case to have a default route to go in and say, you know, IP route 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000 goes out whatever ISP we want. Um, but actually, I want to take this opportunity to prove a point because first off, if we did put in a default route, that would work for client two. I want to go about it another way. I'm going to go into the route map, and I'm going to add sequence number 30. Now, I'm not going to match anything in this case. I'm just going to do a set IP next hop, and let's send it out the ISP2 connection, the slower one, right? 201-112, right? So now let's look at our route map. Show route map, if I can type it. Now you can see we've got the same two sequence numbers up here matching the specific traffic we want, but then sequence number 30 matches nothing, which means it matches everything. Essentially, anything that didn't match sequence 10 or 20 because it processes it in order is going to match this one and end up routing out 201.1.1.2. Now, we're not doing NAT or anything else like that in this case. If we did have NAT policies created, they would also engage when we uh, applied this route map. But for now, let's apply it. I'm going to go into uh, interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0, and I'm going to do an IP policy route map, and we'll do corp underscore policy Oop. enter we now have policy routing in effect for traffic coming into fast ethernet zero slash zero so this is this is an incoming thing as things come into that interface as it will be affected by that corporate policy so how do we verify it well let me show you a pretty sweet command i'm going to do a debug ip policy which actually will show to your screen anything that's policy routed of course Production-wise, be careful using that because if there's a lot of traffic, you could flood your router and end up crashing it. A lot of people wonder, by the way, why does a debug IP packet crash your router? Doesn't your router have to you know, process all those packets anyway? Why does showing it to the screen blow it up? Well, it actually, when you do a debug IP packet or a debug IP policy, anything that produces a large quantity of output shown to the screen, essentially it turns your router... 100% into process routing, meaning all of the caching methods and everything else that it has that makes it essentially a fast, efficient router of today's standards dies. So that's essentially putting everything into uh, processor-based routing is what kills it.
So let's go over to the client one. I, uh, client one, believe it or not, <laughs> I know, believe it, is actually a Cisco router acting as a client. The way I did that is I turned off IP routing and I just said I'm going to set a default gateway to 192.168.1.1, which is our policy router. So check this out. I'm going to do a, uh, I'll do a ping. Now he's supposed to go out ISP2, right? Well, watch what happens if he pings ISP1. I'm going to do 200.1.1.2, and I'll just do a repeat one. So it only sends one ping packet. We can analyze it. Hit the enter key. Notice immediately it goes unreachable, right? It's a U. Now, these are, these are actually Cisco routers. ISP1 and ISP2 aren't the real internet, but they demonstrate the point. Take a look what happened on the policy router. It says, okay, this guy came in trying to go to the destination 200.1.1.2 which immediately says, okay, I have a policy match. That's uh, the FIB, forward in information base. So it says, okay, this is going to be the destination, but I'm going to set the gateway, that's the G, the next hop to 201.1.1.2, which is why this guy ends up coming back unreachable. Is essentially it got to ISP2, who has no idea how to reach 201.1.2, and he sends back an ICMP unreachable saying, I don't know how to get there. So we can do that. I mean, we can change that IP address to anything. Let's do uh, ping 4.2.2.2, a DNS server, right? Unreachable. Why? Because it ended up sending, policy routing kicked in, sending it to 201.1.1.2. Uh, it's policy routed, and that guy's like, actually, I'm not the real internet. I don't know how to get there either. Well, let's see what happens if we uh, hit the up arrow here and change this to ISP1, 201. Bam, success. Why? Because policy routing kicked in and made that happen. Well, okay, so we, we know at least the first line. Let's just do a quick uh, show route map. Actually, I'm not too sure if it'll show uh, matches. Well, there we go. We've got policy routing matches, 10 packets, uh, 1140 bytes, right? So we actually are seeing matches taking place there. The other ones have no matches. Good. Okay, so let's go over to client two. One second. There we go. Bring him into the picture. And let's just do, I think he's the same way. Show IP interface brief. He is a uh, router stripped of its routing capabilities. There's its IP address, show IP route. Essentially just saying I'm going to the default gateway. Okay, so let's let's first off, uh, let's just do a ping. Let's do ping 42222, repeat, did I add an extra two on there? Repeat one. So this should also be unreachable because he should be matching now this last one, which sends him out to 201, right? Let's hit the upper on show route map. And sure enough, we've got our one packet matching sequence 20, or sequence 30, I should say. Now let's just use our tel telnet command to emulate uh, traffic that is going to those. Let's, let's go to telnet. Uh, let's go 200. Let's see. He should be using, well, let's do uh, ISP telnet. I forgot what the objective was. Client 2, both Telnet and HTTP should route towards ISP1. Okay, so I'm going to send it to ISP2, 201.1.1.2, and see if the policy routing kicks in and sends it out ISP1. Okay, so there we go. We've got policy match, uh, source comes in, destination to here, but ah, look at that. Gateway is set to 200. Let's make this a little bigger. 200.1.1.2. As the gateway, and that should we should be able to see the uh, route map now matching sequence number twenty, and we do. Isn't that awesome? So let's hang on. Let's add port eighty under there, uh, just to to see if that. Uh, why did that work? Two. Oh, oh yeah. Two. No. Why did that work? Hang on. It said I need to go to the gateway. Oh, duh. <laughs> I used port 80, not port 443. So it's, of course, this router is responding on port 80. Um, okay, that, that I threw my own self off. So I did uh, 443 was the policy match. That should come back saying down because it's actually forwarding it out the 200.112 gateway. So our, our route map is doing exactly what it should be doing, uh, routing those productive packets to the right ISPs. Awesome. That is policy-based routing. Well, I want to end this nugget by saying something similar to what I started the whole nugget with. Policy-based routing is the most powerful feature you have available to you to direct traffic moving through your Cisco router. <laughs> Use it wisely. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.